All right. So today I'm joined by one of the co-founders of Instantly, Rayo, a, a company, a team that I've been working with um, for the best part of, of two years now. So excited to, to talk through some things. Um, Rayo, could you just give the viewers, whoever's listening to this, like a quick rundown of what Instantly is and what people use your product for? Yeah, for sure. So Instantly, in the most broad sense, is a sales automation and a sales outreach tool. And it's mostly used by B2B businesses uh, like agencies, let's say recruitment firms, um, to basically find their ideal clients, reach out to them, and eventually also close them. Um, so yeah, mostly focused on also the email side of, uh, of the outreach. Nice, nice. Yeah, definitely say one of the one of the main players, if not what the player that popularized, I think the, the new method for, um, cold email, I've been, I call, I've been calling it cold email 3.0. Um, what has growth been like for you guys over the last sort of two years ish since you launched? Yeah. So growth's been, been pretty insane. So we've grown to, uh, around the 21 million ARR mark in, uh, in less than, uh, three years. I think it's been kind of exactly three years now. Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been crazy. The growth has been massive. Mm, nice. How, so you're around like the, the 20 mark. Um, I think you guys hit some of those earlier revenue milestones, super, super early. I think, I think I remember seeing, uh, it was either you or, or Raul or, or Neil say something like you, you guys hit the 1 million ARR mark faster than companies like Slack and, and HubSpot. Um, how just to. I guess, help the viewers understand a, a bit more about the speed of that growth. Do you know off the top of your head, like how long it took you to hit say 1 million ARR and, and then like 10 million ARR, like what, what were the timelines? If you know off the top of your head. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember 1 million ARR very vividly because it was kind of like the first, uh, first huge milestone for us. And I believe that was the first year we launched in August and we launched in February. So, uh, it's kind of. You can calculate the months yourself, but basically just, uh, that came super fast. And then the 10 million mark, uh, came around the two year mark, uh, mm -hmm. after we launched. So, um, so yeah, okay. and like you said, yeah, we beat like kind of some of the companies that are like massive, massive, and mm -hmm. it's been great to see that for sure. Nice. So very sh like super short period between 10 to, to 20 then. Um, yeah. cool. Okay. And what would you say are some of like the biggest drivers for that growth you know like you just said there that speed to some of those revenue milestones has been faster than you know some of the the tech companies that everyone knows off the top of their head like how do you think you were able to hit those revenue milestones so quickly yeah so i think in the very beginning it was uh mostly the the pricing that we launched with so we really came up with a competitive pricing structure so to kind of give some context uh, most of our competitors are charging per seat so if you're a bigger agency or you just need more seats, you're going to have to pay a lot if you're going to use them. And we came in with like an unlimited uh, approach so people could connect how many email accounts they wanted and still had to pay just the, uh, like that one subscription that we asked from them. So that was kind of uh, when we launched the huge thing. And then on top of that, what we've been like focusing on is just keeping the tool as simple as possible. Uh, so every time we add anything, we're trying to think like, uh, how do we keep it as simple as possible? How do we keep it in a way that anyone with no experience can kind of join our platform and still get success with it? So I think mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, those were kind of the uh, two things that worked really well and are still working really well. But now moving on to kind of uh, the later stage, now adding paid ads and all the uh, more like active efforts of, uh, of marketing on top mm -hmm. of that uh, mm -hmm. has been like uh, the second stage of growth, so to say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like two comments. There. I think I remember seeing someone say, cause you guys did, um, what do they call it? Like a lifetime deal at the very, very beginning. I saw someone say it like broke the internet because of, um, how many, how many people wanted it. But yeah, I think the simplicity of the product is definitely a strong point, especially like if you don't know much about cold email and it's the first time you're learning about DKIM, DMARC, like purchasing domains, all of these things that people haven't really done before um it can be very complicated and i think you guys have done a good a good um a good task a good job on like just simplifying that through the like the product ui and the support documentation and stuff um okay so like rewinding back to like the beginning of our partnership 
Um, what sort of revenue were you, were you doing back then? Um, so we were like super tiny compared to what we're now. I believe we're around like the 40 K MRR mark when we, when we started working with, uh, with you. Nice. And yeah, that, that kind of roughly aligns with what I thought. And what was your, your team size back then? What's your team size today, by the way? And then what was it, what was it back then? Yeah, again, like the team size has grown quite significantly as well. I believe like back then we were like super small, maybe like 10 people total. Uh, now we're looking at kind of 60 people. Most of the growth has come from uh, just developers and customer support reps. But yeah, uh, the team size has grown massively uh, during this time as well. Nice. Cool. And what, if you can remember, what were some of the like problems you were facing back then when we first sort of engaged? Um, yeah, so I think one thing was when we first started working with you, we didn't really have like uh, any of the email flows, any of the kind of automation of, uh, of like, uh, what they call life cycle marketing, kind of looking at trials, what kind of emails do we send to these people? What do we send to people on the pay plans? How do we get them to upgrade all that stuff? So that was a, um, thing we needed to kind of figure out from the intercom side, but also, um, Regarding like paid ads, we didn't at the beginning, we didn't get any success with uh, paid ads, just like the, uh, it was just too expensive compared to like all the other channels we were using. So we constantly were like scrapping the paid ads efforts. Um, but yeah, um, those were kind of the two, two things mm. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we first started working together, I, w I was sort of still finding my feet with regards to what I wanted to to do for companies and so i remember it was very scrappy just working on many things like um helping you guys get some visibility into your metrics the onboarding and then i think yeah over time we sort of evolved into uh well i evolved into just focusing solely on like paid acquisition um for you guys um okay if you remember why did you decide to work with me i'm sure you had like loads of people uh, probably even today you know reaching out to you wanting to work with you like kind of one i think you you guys said this one time you 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 were like the hot person in school you know everyone wants to be your friend and join your group um like why did you decide to 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 work with me yeah so actually to be like fully honest i don't remember the very beginning that well i believe it was either raul or nils that kind of kicked off uh, the partnership at first, but I believe it was based on just like case studies and recommendations from other people. We just saw people recommending Liam and, uh, we decided to give him a try and like, uh, we're still working with him. So it's been a really successful partnership. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I initially, um, slid into roles, uh, DMS on, on Twitter. Cause I remember I was using the product and I was like, this, this, I like this. Um, and then I reached out to Raul and, and, and then we started working together. Um, okay. So while working with me, I mean, I, I know we're still working today, but what sort of uh, value do I add to, to your business? Yeah. So over the time, it has like kind of changed quite a bit. Liam has been working on our like attribution or, uh, like the life cycle marketing, all that kind of stuff now being fully basically on, uh, paid ads, which is great, but also just, um, uh, Liam's been like on top of. Uh, on top of the game this entire time. So even just like hearing about something somewhere, like some kind of uh, tool that launched, something that launched, launched here and there, Liam's just kind of uh, staying in the loop with everything, letting us know. It's just like, uh, feels great to have someone on the team who's like uh, bringing in new ideas and not just like shipping the current, like what we agreed on, but also just keeping it fresh, like bringing in new ideas, changing it up, just letting us know about like general developments, like everything. So uh, Nice. So yeah, I think the value is kind of like multi-channel. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to keep my, I like to keep an eye on things. I like to geek out about soft, uh, well, just the, the SaaS industry and, and see what's going on. And, you know, I like to share those, share those trends with, with the people I'm working with so they can capitalize on them. Um, trying to be like a, as and specific as possible would you would you be able to just share some of the results you've received by by working with me like any numbers or uh, quantifiable metrics you can share 
Yeah, so I think the most insane results have been from the paid ads side. So when we started, like in the very beginning, where Liam wasn't on the paid ads side at, uh, yet, we weren't doing like paid ads at all. So we kind of launched the campaign here and there with like a tiny spend and just closed it uh, right away. But now we've reached the point where we're spending like six figures every month on, on paid ads and uh, everything's just going super well there. So we're having like... Uh, the payback period is well below two months. The CAC is uh, is really healthy. It's around, I believe, like eighty dollars across all the channels. Liam can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, but yeah, just uh, we're adding like we've added, I think, four hundred k in MRR last year and uh, this year as well. I haven't looked at the numbers, but like it's uh, we've been scaling the efforts like about ten percent every month, uh, like basically what we spend on paid ads. And it's been going well so far. So I believe 2024 will be uh, even crazier than that. So yeah, it's uh, it's been really good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The CAC has definitely been fluctuating a bit. Sometimes it you know it goes up, sometimes it comes down. But I think averaging out around there. Um, and yeah, I think we yeah. did roughly 400k in MRR last year. I think at the moment we're we're sort of each month trending around between 60 to 75k in MRR per month, uh, we're adding at the moment and yeah, scaling, scaling things, um, quite aggressively, a bit more than 10%. We're probably scaling 25 to 30% month over month, uh, at the moment. Yeah. And I think what people who have done paid ads, which is like most founders, uh, most people just building anything. It's, uh, it's quite difficult to keep the, like the metrics really healthy when you're aggressively scaling, like it's uh, super easy to kind of increase spend, but usually like all the, uh, metrics raise like uh, everything kind of gets worse, but Liam's done a really good job of kind of keeping the results really good while being really, really aggressively scaling the budget. So uh, so that's kind of one um, really good aspect of this partnership as well. Nice, appreciate it. Um, so beyond like everyone, I guess everyone, um, you know, for, for people watching this, like everyone cares about numbers ultimately, right? They just want more revenue, more more cash in the bank. But I think sometimes what can be just as impactful as the numbers, sometimes even more, especially when working with like agencies and freelancers, I like the the um, the sort of, I call them like uh, soft metrics, you know, like um, just their, their attitude and, and stuff like that, the quality of work, the work ethic, that kind of stuff. So would you say there are any other like ways I've helped you out just beyond strictly the, the numbers that, that you've appreciated? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Liam's been super responsive, super trustworthy. That kind of um, also explains why we've been with him for, uh, for this long and uh, we're still like going strong. And, uh, and yeah, just to kind of give you an example, just Sometimes I'm like looking around in Google Analytics, not right understanding some kind of metric there. I just reach out to Liam. He responds right away, just helps me out with like stuff that's not like even fully related to what what we're doing in the partnership at the moment. Um, so yeah, just uh, it's been a great, uh, great partnership. Kind of just reach out, ask kind of random questions at times. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Liam always helps you out. So Nice. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate those words. Um, okay, last couple of questions then. So We've, we've been working together. I think we're coming up to like a two year mark, um, which is, you know, a long time for, uh, to, in, to engage with like a, a third party, right? Two years is good. If an employee stays around for two years, let alone like a, a third party, like an agency, you know, what's made you stick around for that long? Yeah, I think it's all these things that I've kind of mentioned. It's just, uh, Liam is super trustworthy, super responsive. The results we're getting are great. So there's like no reason to look for anything else or to like stop this. It just uh, makes sense to just keep spending, keep scaling. So uh, so yeah, that's kind of the main thing. It's just if, uh, if we like to work with someone and we're getting great results, we're just going to keep that going uh, forever, essentially. As, as long as the money keeps getting made, that's it. <laughs> um, all right, last question then. So if there's like a, a startup founder watching this video right now because you know um it's going to be shared places and let's say this startup founder is like on the fence um about working with me you know they're not sure whether to go ahead they're not sure if i can help them or if i can get them results like what would you say to them um yeah so liam is the guy for you like even not just sounding like super cheesy like uh I, I believe every founder knows like great people and great third parties in general are like super hard to find so I have, even, I don't even know how many people we kind of started working with that we stopped working with. It's been like, uh, 
yeah, it's even tough to count. So uh, good people are really hard to come by. And if you kind of find them, you just stick with them. That's also why we've been with Liam for so long. So yeah, I would just say, uh, just go for it. You're, you're probably not going to find someone better. Nice, kind words. I appreciate that. All right, cheers, Ray. Appreciate your time. All right, thanks.